Your motivation to watch porn. How do you know if it's a problem? I'm Dr. Trish Lee. I'm going to tell you in this video. In this video, we are going to talk about four main components of motivation to watch porn. They're awesome too, so stay tuned because the number one thing we're gonna talk about are the eight main motivations for porn use. Then, number two, we're going to talk about which motivators are most linked to frequency of porn use, problematic porn use, and problematic online sexual activity, acting out in other ways online. Then number three, we're going to talk about the brain pattern that is pulling you back to the screen while you're being pushed back in at the same time, making it difficult for you to leave this habit behind. But then alas, number four, we're going to talk about what you can do instead to break that attraction and motivation back into the screen so that you can get on purpose in your life and become the best version of yourself, which includes being happy and having the joy and the life that you deserve. So let's start with the number one motivators, actually the number eight, number eight motivations for porn use. This is from a brand new study, a 2021 study by Bella et al. that's in the Journal of Addictive Behaviors. So I'm going to read them so I don't miss any, but these are the top eight motivations. Number one, sexual pleasure. Number two, sexual curiosity. Number three, emotional distraction and suppression. Number four, stress reduction. Five, fantasy. Six, boredom avoidance, seven, lack of sexual satisfaction, and number eight, self-exploration. Now we've talked about most of these mo motivators all the time on this channel, actually. We discuss them in most of the videos, and we know that the primary reason that people go to the screen is to reduce stress, deal with unwanted feelings and emotions, they have not learned a different way to deal with negative feelings and escaping into the screen has become the default that was created back in childhood. That when there's boredom going into the screen, when there is a need for fantasy to come out of the real world, your brain has been taught to go back to the screen to take the edge off when all of those things settle in. Now, let's go to number two before we talk about the brain patterns. Number two is which of the motivators are most associated with frequency of porn use? And here in these videos, I always talk about problematic porn use as including frequency, consistency, and intensity. So that is going back often, having a schedule where you go back consistently, having longer sessions, frequent and long and intense in terms of increasing genres and what you're watching to get a larger dopamine hit. So what this new study shows and before I tell you, let me tell you, this is an awesome new study because it has a big number of people that it included, and it's from three different samples that were put together. Two of those samples had over 50% of women included, and the other one had a smaller percentage, but this has a lot of women. So we know that this is not only for men, but this is happening for women in terms of those eight motivators that I just shared with you. But that being said, the motivators towards frequency of porn use, problematic porn use, and problematic online sexual activity was much higher in men because I know sometimes we get into those discussions. Okay, so what was found is that the parameters that are associated with stress reduction, decreasing stress, are the ones that are most linked to frequency, problematic use, and problematic online sexual activity. So if you are going to the screen to take the edge off of stress and to avoid negative feelings and to escape real life for a little while, then you are most at risk for a problematic porn use and sexual activity use online. I know what you're thinking is that that's not rocket science, but what I'm here to share with you is that it is neuroscience. So right now I encourage you to think about what's the primary reason that you keep going back to porn or to sexual acting out. If it's to reduce stress, 
then it's time to break this habit. What was least shown to be linked to problematic use is sexual exploration and looking at different types of sexual curiosity. And that was found more in women who had less frequent use. So, you know, some people might say, you know, porn use isn't a problem. I just, you know, do it every once in a while for curiosity and self-exploration. Those are people who likely don't have a problem because the utilization and the motivation is different. If the motivation is stress reduction and escapism, time to explore alternatives. Okay, so number three, what's going on in your brain that is making it so that you want to or have to or are so motivated to go back into the screen? It's to take the edge off. So what happens in your brain is if your brain is in a hyper aroused state, throughout your day and your life, your brain will start using very fast brain speed. It's called high beta. And when high beta gets cranking, guess what? It becomes self-fulfilling. It becomes self-generating. Anxiety brews more anxiety and high beta is the speed of anxiety. So if you are stressed out in your work, your nervous system in your brain is in a hyper aroused state. It is jacked up. It is going a million miles a minute. And because of that, it has a very strong need or motivator to be able to bring all that fast electrical energy down in your brain. That motivator, as you're, you have trained your brain and linked it, becomes pornography because it's a super normal stimulus that dumps dopamine into your brain, brings hyper arousal down into hypo arousal very quickly. That's that feeling in your brain that you get when you think about watching porn for so many people. When you begin to ritualize the ritual, your brain's already dripping that dopamine into your system. And when you begin to use porn, you get this flood of dopamine that takes you from hyper aroused, stressed out and anxious, filled with negative emotions to not feeling that stress and not dealing with those negative emotions. But now this is the catch and it's been proven by many studies before this Bella et al study and they're actually referenced in the study if you wanna see. The catch is that you think you're going to porn for stress reduction, but unfortunately it's creating more stress for you because of the AB effect. Dopamine floods into your system, it numbs you out and makes you feel good in the moment short-term gain. Unfortunately, long-term loss as those dopamine levels go lower, cortisol spikes and you've trained your brain, you've linked your brain to the screen for dopamine. So then when you go into your world and you have work to do and you have family to spend time with, you no longer get dopamine there. Your hobbies don't do it for you because the only thing that does it for you is the screen because you've linked your brain to it. So that's what's happening in your brain, which leads us to number four. And there's four today because someone so cute put in the comments, you know what, Dr. Trish, there's more than three numbers. Of course I know there's more than three numbers. And today it just ended up being four, but it's the perfect opportunity for me to tell you that I do expand on all these concepts in my new podcast, Porn Brain Reboot. It's available on all major podcast um, modalities, so you can find it wherever you would like. If you don't know how to do that, you can go to pornbrainreboot.org. There's a podcast page there and you can listen to all the podcasts there. So the point was I always keep it to three for sake of ease and to keep us organized here so you know what to expect. But if you ever want to know the expanded version with more discussion and special guests that are coming up, the podcast has that. They're all about 30 minutes long and that you can find them over there where we can expand upon the concept. Okay, but moving into special number four today, special number four is what do you do about it? So right now, your brain has learned when you were young to be motivated back into the screen to reduce your stress. You must, must, must find a way to reduce your stress in a different way. And in this video, I want you, I encourage you to get out your leather slash pleather journal and in it, write down all the stressors that you have in your life. 
past stressors that might be lingering in your nervous system still, traumas, dysfunction, experiences, anything that's dragging you down from the past. This is an important one. Write down any of your stressors or producers of negative emotions in your current life. Write them down so that you can see them for what they are. And, then, and also neuroscience shows when you write things down, you integrate them and you explore them and you can figure them out better. So that's why I want you to get a leather journal, one that you like and enjoy writing in so you can start exploring these concepts and taking them from concepts to action steps. So think about all your stressors. Now, honestly, the way into your full potential and a beautiful life is to reduce those stressors to nil. Get rid of as many of those stressors or tolerations as I have called them for a long time. Get rid of the ones that you can get rid of. Do work that you love. Don't stay in a job that you hate. If you're in a relationship that just isn't working for you and you can't figure out how to do the work to make it work, that's actually the better option if you wanna stay. Figure out how to work on your relationship. Nobody knows how to do it unless they make an active decision to figure it out. In today's day and age of Google, you can go online and figure out how to move through the issue that you're having to grow and heal and have a stronger relationship. But choosing to be in relationships that do not drag you down, that fill you up, that put your brain in this brain boosting mode, very, very important. So if you find that your relationships are incredibly stressful, Reduce the amount of time you spend with the stress-provoking people. Spend more time with people who make you feel good about yourself and spend time and energy, communication and interaction style in improving the relationship, the primary relationship that you have in your life. Because the time that you invest in yourself and your relationship will pay off. But what I want you to remember from this video is that what we know is that it all has to do with stress reduction and not being able to deal with negative emotions. That's what a problematic porn use habit has to do with. That is what problematic sexual online activity has to do with. So the way out is through figuring out what those stressors are, taking away the ones you can, and learning how to deal with the ones that you have better. Getting to a place where they don't have to be that stressful. And but caveat right now, I have to remind you of the caveat that a lot of the stress might be coming from you if you're still going back to the screen because we know that porn use creates a brain pattern that can't find dopamine in those places, can't find dopamine in work, can't find dopamine in your relationships, and can't find dopamine in your hobbies like your brain could if you weren't watching porn. That's why the number one thing to do is to stop watching porn. Get a blocker. Put your phone in a phone lockbox. Do something so that you can get over that hurdle. Not just something, I've made videos on specifics, but these are examples. Do something so that you can get over those hurdles so that you can figure out what these stressors are. Get rid of the ones you can reduce the ones that you can't get rid of or you don't want to, and then find a way to move towards the negative emotions, move towards the stress with an action step instead of running into the screen for escapism. This is your chance to invest in yourself, to make yourself a better version of yourself. And I've said before um, elsewhere that I basically shed my skin and come anew every seven years, but it's not like every seven years, you know, I transform in a moment. What's happening is because I'm on a journey of self-discovery and constant self-improvement, every day is anew. Every day I take an action step to become a better version of myself. I deal with a hard thing and I try to deal with it better than I did last time. So last time if I yelled, this time I approach without yelling. Last time if I ran away, this time I approach without having to escape. Day in and day out, daily action steps. They don't have to feel monumental, but if you celebrate them moving towards the discomfort instead of away, you'll realize none of these feelings are going to kill you. They're really not. And that's a huge thing that I've learned in my life when I thought I couldn't handle things and then I woke up the next day having handled them. You can handle them too. And on a day by day, moment by moment basis, Choose to move towards the pain and discomfort instead of running away and escaping into sex because it's short-term gain, long-term loss. 
And if you're going to become the best version of yourself, you have to be able to deal with it in a healthy way. All right. I hope this helps out. It's a really cool new study. You can find a way to move through the stress, break it up and free yourself of it. It's your turn, like a phoenix, to rise from the ashes. I'd love to help you. If you want more information, jump on over to drtrishley.com. I have blog posts there. Um, we have the podcast. I have other blog posts and podcasts too, if you're interested. And as always, remember, control your brain or it'll control you.